Hi everyone, this is Brandon John at gdntbasics.com. Today I wanted to go over with you how to use our orthographic views wall chart. This is a new chart that we've created and we've released, uh, hopefully to clear up uh, a lot of confusion whenever it comes to angle projections. Angle projections, as most of you know, uh, very, very important topic from a blueprint interpretation standpoint or drawing interpretation. Uh, we need to know what these projection angles, uh, what they mean, how to identify them, and this chart helps explain all of that. The purpose of the chart that we've created here, like I said, is to uh, help eliminate a lot of the confusion out there. Uh, the intent of it is to provide a reference that is simple to use and easy to understand. Uh, that's always our approach here at GD&T Basics, uh, trying to simplify stuff. And anytime we can create uh, charts like this or our tap drill chart, our uh, GD&T wall chart, anything that we can do to try to help simplify stuff uh, and also provide quick references, uh, very important to us as a company. So. There are two projection methods used in the world on drawings. And on that drawing, there should be a symbol. You won't always find it on there. We deal with a lot of different companies. Uh, some companies will put it into a design standard. It may be placed in the notes. Um, it is preferred to have it on the drawing itself. That way the interpreter has it right there readily available. Do not need to go to another document to find out what that projection is supposed to be. It is identified with um, uh, a symbol and the it started its life called uh, the plug symbol, uh, but we just call it the projection angle symbol now. But like I said, it'll be on there. Um, there are only two methods and fortunately um, only one can be used on a drawing. So that eliminates 50% uh, of the confusion. Uh, still, we have to identify what it is, but we're not allowed to mix the two projection methods. So whatever it is that we choose for the drawing, it's global, it is for the entire drawing. So from an interpretation standpoint, uh, like I said earlier, we do have to find this symbol. And that way we're, we're gonna know what the projection method is. We have these orthographic views. Um, they're, they're, they come from the front view, whether it is a first angle or a third angle projection. Uh, it originates in the front view and then it is projected off to the right, the left, the top, the bottom. And we're gonna look at the difference on those projections uh, real quick between first angle and third angle. Not looking for this, tell, we tell our students all the time uh, when we find out that, that it, they didn't even know it existed. Not looking for this symbol. Um, this could be uh, a, a, a high scrap rate on parts could cause the interpretation, not just in uh, manufacturing, also metrology. Uh, not understanding that we do have these rules for these projections. We do need to look at it, understand that when we go to a right side view, if you will, uh, the hidden lines that we're seeing in that view, is it on the, when you're looking at the right side view, is it on the right or the left, meaning top or bottom? Um, understanding these projection angles will help you out. Let's first take a look at the projection angles table up here in the top left. Zoom in here and take a look at this. So here we're showing that plug symbol that I mentioned earlier. Uh, it does require the two views um, any way you place it. So we need the one looking at the front and then how it's gonna be projected to the right, the left, the top, the bottom. One very important thing to point out here is that for first angle, this symbol can be placed um, on either side or top or bottom. There is no right or wrong way to this. We did, uh, back in the day, we would see it uh, normally stuck in one position. That way, when that cone or that plug, uh, the, the side view went to the left or went to the right on most drawings, uh, that's not the case. They changed that rule a long time ago. Uh, any one of these four are acceptable. So for first angle, the projection of that places the object between the observer and the plane of projection. Sometimes this is referred to as the European projection. Um, I've heard this many times throughout my career, um, but the official name for it is first angle projection. 
anyone adhering to ISO standards, uh, they will be using the first angle projection and that will be what they're most accustomed to and they will see that to be normal um, from their world. Staying in the projection angles table, moving down now the third angle projection. So looking at that symbol, um, hopefully you've already noticed the, the difference between the two and the fact that the large diameter of the cone, looking at it from that uh, side profile, if you will, where we can actually see the taper. In the first angle, the large diameter is closest to that, uh, the view that we see with the crosshairs on there. Um, in third angle, the smaller diameter is closest. So for third angle projection, this is going to place the plane of projection between the observer and the object. Um, this is sometimes referred to as the American projection. In fact, ASME refers to this as the American projection. It's actually in the standard. Uh, this is the projection that we use in North America. When we're adhering to the ASME standard, we're using third angle. Uh, in fact, when you go into ASME Y14.5, all of the drawing examples that they're going to put in the standard or that are currently in the standard will all be third angle projections because that is what we use in the, the United States and most of North America. Okay, now let's zoom in on the standard drawing views uh, compared. And instead of using the plug symbol there, let's apply it to a real part and take a look at it. This is what's on that wall chart. So first, uh, let's identify the front view. And like I stated before, now all orthogonal views on the drawing will originate from this view, including the isometric view. So now that's a big one. A lot of uh, drawing creators will violate that rule, but that projection for isometric views, that is supposed to also come from that front view. So we're not supposed to go in and pick uh, kind of the the isometric view that clarifies the most uh, for the part, it's based off of what we chose as the front view. So remember that, that's a design tip there. Make sure that you're always creating that from that front view. For first angle, um, on this one, note how the left side of the part is projected on the right side of the front view. So the front of the part. Also, uh, like I said earlier, pay close attention to those hidden lines. Um, if you do pick up a drawing and you don't see the plug symbol on the drawing, which typically is located down in the title block, if you do not see that on the drawing, uh, go to your hidden lines. Uh, those hidden lines will uh, hopefully clarify it and show you exactly what the projection angle method used on the drawing, uh, what it is. So not always, uh, but that brings up another uh, design tip there. When you're creating drawings, use hidden lines. Uh, we see far too often nowadays that those hidden lines are not going on the drawing and they should be on that drawing. Uh, we need to justify why to take them off when they're not present. And there are times when it just creates so much clutter, so much confusion that you need to get them off of the drawing. Uh, but for the most part, when it comes to detailed drawings, uh, we need to show those hidden lines. It does help not just in determining, in this case, the projection method used, but also uh, helping to clear up where a lot of these interior features, counter bores, uh, pockets, whatnot, where they're at. Those hidden lines will uh, give that away. Again, let's identify the front view here for third angle. So we'll zoom back in here. Like we said before, all the orthogonal views on the drawing originate from that front view. And again, you know, isometric as well. So now that we're looking at third angle, note how the right side of the part is projected onto the right side of the front view or the front of the part. So in third angle projection, right side view goes on the right side of the front view. And you'll note too through, uh, through these other ones, top, of the part goes in the top view. Uh, when we go on to the bottom of the part, it goes below or, or uh, to the bottom of the front view, left goes uh, to the left. Now this is exactly opposite of uh, third angle. Um, we call 
we call first angle here in the US, we call that the bizarro world. Um, we only say that because we're accustomed to this, right on the right, left on the left, top on the top, bottom on the bottom. When we do have to deal with first angle, it just seems backwards uh, to a lot of people here in the US. But it's obviously um, people that are dealing with first angle, uh, third angle is the bizarro one because of the way that it uh, gets rotated around in their views. So next up, we're gonna look at the this bowl method. Uh, and this is intended to help clarify this. This is actually our favorite way to visualize third angle versus first angle parts. Let's start once again with third angle, typically used in the U.S. and Canada. For third angle, imagine having a big salad bowl on your desk, and you put your part in the salad bowl. So first, place the part in the center of the bowl with the front view facing up. That is your front view. Remember, this will probably be your central view on your drawing. Next, if you want to get one of the side views, all the views are captured looking down into the bowl. So this is our front view right here. Now imagine sliding the part up to the left side of the bowl, just like this. That is your left view. Since we're on the left side of the bowl, the view you see is the left view. It'll appear like this on your drawing. You can repeat these steps for every other side of the bowl. Let's do it for the right view. Well, we just slide the part up. That is what our right view looks like. We can put that on our drawing. Now remember, you don't need an actual bowl to do this. You can just visualize this as you go. But when you're looking at your 2D print, picture it sitting in a bowl. That's the view you would get as it rocks left and right or up and down. So you just repeat the steps for all the other views, just like this. And just like this for the bottom view. So you can do this to either convert from 3D to 2D, or if you have your 2D print, just picture that's what it looks like in the bowl, and as you're rotating the part around, it needs to just slide on the bowl's surface. This is our favorite way to do this because it's easy to do without even having the part in your hand. If you have the 2D view, you know that the top view is how the part would look if you slid it up in the bowl and viewed it straight down. The good thing about the bowl method is it can also be used for first angle. There's only one big difference. This time we're going to flip the bowl upside down as we're sliding the part along the bowl. So once again we're going to start with the part on top of the bowl with the front view facing up, just like this. Remember, the front view on both versions doesn't change. We're still viewing the front of the part here. This is how it would look on our 2D print. Now remember, all views are captured looking down onto the bowl. Now imagine sliding the part down to the left side of the bowl, just like this. That is what the left view would look like and where it would be on your drawing. Since we're on the left side of the bowl, the view you see is the left view, right here. Next, we do it for the other sides. So here's the right view, which you can see would be right over here in our drawing. And we can do the same for the top view, right here, and the bottom view, right here. You can see once again that it gives you a good representation of what the 2D view would look like when you have a part, or you can take the 2D part and imagine what the 3D version would look like if you had it on this bowl. The other good thing about the bowl method is you can use it for both first angle and third angle, you just have to remember to flip over the bowl. 
Again, we wanted to give you multiple ways of visualizing how orthographic views work, since it's so important to be able to interpret on an engineering drawing. This is incredibly important in your ability to read engineering prints. It's very important that you understand how the 2D drawing will conceptualize into a 3D model and the other way around as well, and to be able to accurately understand what you're looking at when you pick up a two-dimensional print. 